Hey guys, this is Dan for Late, and today I'm going to be showing you my top three plugins for improving dialogue and voiceovers in Final Cut Pro X. So now that we're in Final Cut, we're just going to click on this effects panel down here to open up all of our effects. Right now it's showing video and audio, but if we scroll down to just audio, we can click on all, and that'll show us just the audio effects. As you can see, there's literally hundreds of effects down here, and I totally recommend having a play around just to see what they all do, because it's, it's a lot of fun. But today we're gonna to be focusing on just three to really improve your dialogue. Here's a real quick tip before we begin. If you've got multiple clips on your timeline, say you're recording a voiceover and you've had multiple takes, then we can combine those into one big audio clip. All we do is select both of these on your timeline, right click, go to new compound clip, or you can press option G, hit okay, and there we have all of our audio in one clip. Now that's important because it means that if we drop any audio effects onto our timeline, onto this clip, it will affect everything all in one go and we don't have to apply effects to individual clips, which can take ages. So now that we've grouped our dialogue, the first plugin we're going to look at is EQ. So if we click down here in the effects, it's the top one here, channel EQ. All we do is drag it onto our clip, let go, and we see it appear over here in the audio inspector. So you can open that up by clicking here and here's our EQ. So when EQing dialogue, the best thing to do really is to low cut usually. If you have any rumble or things like that, then you want to have a bit of a low cut, probably around 80 or 90 hertz. That'll cut off any of the low end, anything that's like rumbly or you know really bassy traffic noise, anything like that, or room tone. It'll help just to clean things up a little bit. If your dialogue is particularly boomy, say you're wearing a lav mic or something, then you might want to decrease around about 250 hertz. That'll just take the boom out and make it sound a little bit more natural. Likewise, all of the sparkle is sort of around 4,000 to 5,000 hertz. So if your audio is sounding a little bit dull, boost around there and that will add a little bit more brightness to your audio. You can also high cut. If you have anything like light harms or things like that, you can just high cut your audio, uh, make sure it's nice and steep like this, high cut it and it will chop anything like that straight off. As I play this clip of audio and tweak the EQ settings, you should be able to hear the subtle changes as certain frequencies are being raised and lowered. This is an example voiceover to look at EQ. This is an example voiceover to look at EQ. One thing to bear in mind is if you need to boost or cut by more than a couple of dBs, you might need to rethink your microphone placement or audio setup, because that's kind of indicating a larger problem here. Some microphones or recording setups can overemphasize sibilant S or SH sounds, and that can be a little bit unpleasant for viewers at home. So the next plugin we're gonna take a look at is called the de -esser. If we go down to voice in the effects browser, we can find the de and drag it into our clip. So just down here. It'll appear below the EQ, and again, we can open it up to access the controls. You probably won't need to tweak this too much from the default settings, but the main parameters to play around with are frequency, to find and isolate those pesky sibilant S's, which are usually found around four to 7,000 Hertz, and strength to determine how much you're reducing them by. I'd probably start off around minus five dB, and then tweak it a little further from there. The last plugin we're gonna look at here is a limiter. If we go up to levels, it should be at the top of the bar. There we go, limiter. So we're gonna drag that onto our audio now just to see what that looks like. I'll open it up here. Now for the limiter, we probably want to set the output level to more around about negative three dB. Yeah, something like that would be quite good. We normally want to raise the release to about 250, so it sounds a little more natural for voice. And then we probably want to raise the gain a bit as well to more like six or seven db just to make sure that it's doing its job if i hit play on this clip you can see that the levels are coming through to the meters on the plugin and we can use these to find out how much it's affecting our dialogue for this particular clip we want to be hitting between minus three db and minus six db on the reduction meter which we are so that's great and if i toggle the plugin on and off you can see that the waveform is being raised up and evened out which is exactly what we're after and basically what this is doing is it's raising the volume of all of your dialogue in general, but also limiting how loud it can go. All of the plugins we've looked at can be used at the same time in a chain, so that the audio signal passes through them all in order from top to bottom. This means that your dialogue is processed by the EQ first, then the de and finally the limiter. We would usually have the limiter last in a plugin chain like this, so that's why it's at the very bottom. If you're getting a little more creative with your plugin chains, you can easily reorder them by simply clicking and dragging them around. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you'd like to license the music track used in this video or other commercial tracks, head over to the Licked website in the description below.